Hi, everybody. It's Mel Dore, the Aloha shirt, flamingo shirt psychic. And I've got Linda G in the house. Hi, Linda. Hi. Uh, we've got some questions to answer. And um, we made it through the cat skills. <laughs> uh, it was wonderful. It was just beautiful up there. Oh, my God. It's the scenery. Oh, my gorgeous. God. The air, you know, you breathe this really nice air. But I actually got to see New York. You know, on the highway, we, you know what I like about the car rentals in, in New, Newark? It had a thing on it. So when you go through a toll, it takes it. There's right. some car rentals that don't do that. Yeah, it did. Ours did. But it was funny flying in because we flew uh, and out the left side of the window. We could see the twin, twin, I mean, the, the trade tower. We could see then, you know, in New York Harbor, we could see Statue of Liberty out the window. It was really cool. No kidding. I couldn't see it. Yep, we did. But we were driving in the dark. Well, no, I'm not talking from the car. I'm talking from the airplane. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you guys got in later. We got an earlier start, but traffic was a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Yes. We got there and then David drove back. So. Oh, David drove you guys back because he didn't like how slow you drive? No, actually, I drive pretty fast. But um, <laughs> he was teasing about I, I Mel know. being so slow. Yeah, because the traffic was killer. But anyway, um, and about how you backhanded all of them to shut up. Just so. Shut up. My dad used to do that. You know, three kids, three fat heads. He'd get us in one fell swoop. I just pull over to the side and say, OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, on the way back, my one of my, you know, my allergies were flaring up. And my eye was bothering me, so I asked David to drive. I put his name on the rental car, too. And he would graciously did that. So thank you, oh, David. He was such a big help. Oh, my God. He was amazing. He was amazing. <laughs> and not too bad on the eyes, too. Easy to look at. When uh, he used to bring me my coffee in the morning, because in the morning, I just want coffee. I don't care about anything else. And uh, some of the girls went by to go have breakfast, and they're looking, because David's standing there with the coffee. And I said... Don't spread any rumors now, girls. And I went, spread rumors. <laughs> you were loving it, girlfriend. I loved it. I loved it. But he's my son's age. Jesus. We we had a good time. I mean, we had a, we had, oh my God, Mel, you are the best dancer. Oh, thank you. You got two awards. One for the best legs. And I've never seen anyone with such beautiful legs as you. you. Smooth as a baby's butt. I'm telling you, you've got gorgeous legs. And you are such a good dancer. You really, you do that kind of like that thing like this. And oh my God, I was like, oh my God, Mel is a fantastic dancer. We were always told, hold your frame. I was like, oh, yeah, oh my you brain. did it. You did real good. But when people dance and they go back, and you know, they move their arms back and forth. The dance teacher used to say, you look like a demented windmill. Hold your frame. Hold your frame. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you took <laughs> dance lessons. You know, not long. I mean, I, I did in college. I took jazz and then I, you know, I, I just love to dance. And so I took ball. You, you have the beat in you. You could have been um, on Dancing with the Stars for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You got to have the rhythm, you know, and yeah, like I can hear it in my head. And when I then when we were doing ice skating, um, when they would choreograph, I would have to like do it in my head and dance and then choreograph it to ice skating. So sometimes that was a little tough, but it still came through. <laughs> I never tried to ice skate ever in my life. Of course, I lived in California all my life. Well, some people, you know, have the balance and you have, to have the ankles and the balance and the agility and some don't. But um, I picked it up. I couldn't um, uh, ski either, water ski. I had a friend whose father was a doctor and they had a boat and I would go out and I tried several times, but you know, I got those thighs that flap together like <laughs> Well, when you water ski, you have to let the boat pull you up, you know, because if you pull back, you'll kind of skim the water on your rear end. And so I just never had any luck. I could never get up. Uh -huh. I could snow ski a little bit, but not water ski. I believe it or not, I've never snow skied. Never. Oh, okay. I gotta try. When you come out here, if you come out in the winter, I'll take you up. And best not we break any bones right now. Well, I'll do the bunny slope. How's that? There you go. There you go. Oh, we'll just go ballroom dancing and call it a day. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That'd be so much fun. So That'd much fun. fun. And I love teaching as well. So yeah, you do a great job, my friend. You're a man of many talents. Well, thank you. So are you. A woman, thank not a man. You. 
Well, some have called me a man. <laughs> You're a girl of many talents, Blanche. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Shall we get started? Yes. Yes. All right. Callie Sud, speaking of California. <laughs> oh, Callie, I know who she is. Okay. She said, uh, the Russian guy <laughs> is yeah. mad. I don't think we can mention names, but he's mad because the bridge connecting Crimea to Russia was blown up. She says, um, and how do we know it wasn't the Russians who blew it up since many are fleeing Russia to avoid the draft? And then she said, is Belarus going to help Putin? Uh, I mean, him. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, I, I'm going to tell you, it was not, the Russians that blew up their own bridge. No, That's for sure. I don't feel that either. And I do think the, the Ukraine knows who it was. Exactly. It's somebody within the Ukraine, but he's calling it an act of terrorism. Do you think the killing of innocent people that they're finding dead in these ditches is not a terrorist act? Well, it all depends on how you define terrorism. You know, he invaded a country that did absolutely nothing to him for nothing no to him. And is committing genocide. So you know who, who's the terrorist here? Yeah, it's very sad. But don't worry, you guys. I don't want you to worry. You know what's really weird? Last night, I had a very significant dream about huge thunder, and I could see the lightning. It was so bad. I was hovering with some people, some, I think some family members. But a boom, and then you could see the light. I wonder if I was dreaming about the bombs. Well, that's what, yeah, I think so, because that's what's going on now. It was breaking yeah. news. Seems like every time we do a show, we get breaking news. Like, I know, I know. But, you know, Ukraine will not give up. They're not going to give up. And so, you know, as far as Belarus helping Russia, I think they kind of already are. But I foresee a lot of a lot of people from Belarus leaving and joining the Ukrainians. Oh, that's fantastic. And my Russian friends tell me there's a lot of people uh, that are trying to get out of Russia and they're having a hard time. And I think as of a certain point, Russia is going to close its border with Kazakhstan because a lot of people are going out through Kazakhstan and fleeing that way. And so it's, it's pretty sad that they have to close their borders to keep people in. So what's the, your friends, your Russian friends, what's the temperature? How are people feeling? Is it? creating a lot of chaos. I'm almost thinking that they were getting hit with fake news. And then all of a sudden they're saying, your sons, your husbands have to come and join. And, and they're like, what? And a lot of people were talking about their sons never came home. And I just think they're like really waking up right now. Well, a lot of people here in Chicago and in Byron's are from the former Soviet Union. So Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, uh, you know, all of those countries were a part of the former Soviet Union. And uh, many are Jewish and they came here to escape the pogroms. Many aren't, but they, they came um, during Brezhnev when the Iron Curtain opened. So many of the people here still have relatives in Russia. And many have relatives in Ukraine. Uh, and so, you know, I think with word leaking out from here back to Russia and letting people, the Russians know what's going on and this and that. I mean, some do like Putin, but many of them are trying to get out of the country because they're starting this draft. And these these people, if they don't, they don't, Putin is forcing them to go into the military. And if they don't, they be they're in prison for 10 years. I know. It's so, so sad. it's it's almost like life under Stalin again over there. And so a lot of people are trying to escape and they're figuring yes. out how to do it. And, uh, you know, the other thing is they're requiring to bring their own rations, their own sleeping stuff. They're, it, it's what? They don't have enough money to feed them and take care of them. So how can you maintain an army? You know, it's funny. Uh, people here talked about, you know, we don't want communism, but now they have Putin, which is even worse. And, and the worst and the bigger thing is, you know, one day you've got your visa, your master, your Gucci, your bank account. You got this, you got that. McDonald's. Were they living pretty good? Yeah. I mean, but then all of a sudden it's all gone. Yeah. It's all gone. I mean, they're even having problems getting feminine products for women. I mean, it's it's like there's shortages everywhere. And um, 
uh, it's, it's, I think the people are really opening their eyes as to what's going on. You know, they were, they were victims of their propaganda, but yeah. you know, the word from the, from here leaks out to there and, and the stories I'm getting, it's, it's really bad there. That's a shame. So, you know, I mean, my heart goes out to the Russian people as well, because it, it's, yes. not, it's not their fault. No. And to the Ukrainian people who are dying, of course. Of course. Uh, but um, I think how many people were uh, killed in this this last bombing? I Was it twenty five or something? But you know, it's like if it's one, it's one too many. And they also hit some of the major infrastructure stuff. I think they they affected people's ability to get power and water or something. So it won't stop the Ukrainians. No, no, absolutely not. You know, Stalin said, "What was it that Stalin said?" And I think a lot of dictators kind of followed this. Stalin said. One death is a tragedy, but a million is a statistic. So interesting. I think let's all take, you know, and send healing and prayers for peace and to the people of Ukraine. Um and and just do what we (laughs) anyway. That was a good question, Kelly. Very Um, good question. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, Catherine Benson wants to know, what about Lisa Murkowski in Alaska? Will she win? Well, I have the list to go through these next couple of days. I'm going to be going through the list, but let me take a look at her real quick. Well, think about that guy in Maryland. He's running almost like 20 or 30 points or more ahead. He's a Democrat, that guy in Maryland. He's running, I can't think of his name. He's running for governor, and he's so many points ahead of the Republican guy who is subscribes or ascribes to QAnon and all that stuff. And I saw that, I saw the Democratic uh, nominee in Maryland. I can't think of his name. And my husband and I were sitting at the dinner table and I said, that guy's going to be president one day. He's amazing. Wow. What guy is his name? What's his name? What city is it again? Or uh, Maryland. Let me, let me look. I can tell you. Uh, Maryland. Senator Chris Van Hollen. Governor candidate. Oh, governor. Or Maryland. No, he's he's running for governor. Uh, Maryland is Dan Cox versus Westmore. Um, right. Okay, here. Um, Dan Cox is, and then uh, Westmore. Westmore is the guy. Uh, he's a he's a he's a Democrat, and I tell you, he's amazing. Um, you know, he talks about, you know, how the people that stormed the Capitol on nine one one were like that. They said they were for democracy. That's not democracy. That's insurrection. They have it all wrong. And it he was, called it out. It was a oh, it was amazing what he said. And he talked about his grandfather. You know, um, he's African American, but he talked about his grandfather and his great grandfather about how they stood up for what they felt and what they believed, and how they were able to affect change, affect you know, in a good way. And he said that is democracy. It was amazing. You know, I do see Murkowski winning. You do? How about you? Um. See, I felt to win there too. <laughs> okay. I really did. I guess people really like her. She was a write in before, remember? Yes. Yes. I don't know what her stand on abortion was. I can't remember, but um anyway. Um watch the guy in Maryland. He's gonna he's gonna I mean he is stuck. He's gonna beat somebody. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's amazing. Oh, he, I love it. He's fresh he blood. It's the same thing when Barack became a senator in Illinois, and I said he's going to be president. And you could just feel it. No, yeah. I didn't. And the same with this guy in Maryland. He's amazing. He's an excellent leader. What about uh, Budalicious? And besides that, he's nice looking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Easy on the eyes. What about uh, Budalicious? I think Budalicious at some point will be vice president on to president. It'll be a while, but uh, he's going to do well. He's very smart. I mean, for all those homophobic people, you know, America will have, you know, the the president and the first gentleman, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'd like to see what some of the Republicans will think about that. 
<laughs> oh, there's so many angry Republicans. It's so sad. It is sad. It's very sad. A lot of angry Democrats, too, but they have the right. Yeah. To yeah. Isn't it amazing how the Democrats were the ones that didn't want free slaves and all that? Correct. <coughs> Back in those days. And then it totally switched. It was just the opposite. What Democrats are today was what Republicans were during Abe Lincoln's time. Right. But Republicans today are as bad as the Democrats back in the day. Oh, yeah. That's as angry and Absolutely. violent and mean. A lot of the South remained Democrat. Uh, but then the change was when the Republican Party started changing and became more ultra right, then here we are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. Oh, Kelly Suds has another one, another question. She's on a roll today. Kelly? What about North Korea missiles launches to attack South? I don't think they're going to, I don't think that North Korea will attack the South with nukes. Uh, I've, I've never felt it. And it's almost like blustering or showing is. off or it's trying to act like he's significant. It's a show of force. And I mean, they're saying they're not loaded. They're not loaded missiles. So It's fear mongering. Uh, but, but you notice the president never said a word about North Korea versus Putin. He said he's worried about about uh, Russia, but he's not as wor he didn't say anything about North Korea. Well, even if they use tactical nuclear weapons like um, you know neutron bombs and whatever, and they they say that, you know they don't destroy a lot of buildings, they kill a lot of people. They have to think about that because. You know, if if Russia launches a nuclear strike, you it's know, it's over. It's over, and I think everybody knows that. No, you know, these people. A lot of Republicans say, "Oh, a nuclear war is survivable." Oh, okay. Well, let's say you survive one. You know, and they like Putin. Well, then go in there and be with Putin. <laughs> yeah, and see how you like it. <laughs> right, yeah. because it's not Putin's just not making a decision for himself. He's making one for the lives of millions. Because United States and all the NATO people, all nukes will be on them. They'll just go for it. They'll just, it'll be mass, well, the, like he said, Armageddon. The Republicans talk about, you know, freedom here and all of this and all that. But yet many of them support Putin. It's like, but wait a minute. He's a dictator. He's taking away people's individual freedoms. So I don't understand the hypocrisy. But, you know, anyway, I see Putin taken down, so... Okay, Ellen Burgos wants to know. Hi, Lynn and Mel. I hope uh, I hope you had a great event up in the Catskills. We did. It was wonderful. Love you both in your collabs. Will Bill Barr ever be brought to justice for all of his orchestrations? Oh, I like that orchestration. Orchestrations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I've always seen him like under investigation and at some point maybe even indictment. I mean, he's not out of the woods. Absolutely not. They're already calling him up on something, but I can't remember the details. But I see his blatant lies about the Mueller report is going to catch up with him. Right. He's going to be in trouble for that. And we can't use the E word, which is coming up in four weeks. But people want to know about oh. people want to know about the midterms. They're nervous. And yeah, so I, I can only repeat what I've been saying all along. It's going to be like ants. Michael Moore agrees with me. Um, and M Michael Moore, I was so furious at him when he said Trump was going to win. I thought he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, he knew what he was talking about. He's in the nation, he said. He was on, um, who I don't watch him, Bill Maher. But somebody put a clip on YouTube. And he said, I'm in the heartbeat of middle America. And I'm going to tell you, watch what happens. It's going to be there. We are going to win Democrat, the house, everything we're going to win. Well, I think a lot of women are hopping mad Democrat and Republican because of the Roe v. Wade thing. Right. When that went through immediately, because I was like, what? And my guide said he just handed the midterms. The Supreme Court just handed the midterms to the Dems on a silver platter which really sometimes a curse is a blessing, you know, and at some point Roe v. Wade will be upheld. It'll be codified. And so will gay marriage because they're going to be picking on that next. Yes. But, you know, they're, they're not even doing some sort of plan like, let's 
okay, we're not doing anything past this number of weeks, 15, you know, we're, well, and it doesn't matter if you're a baby, a minor, and, and it doesn't matter about, you know, if you were assaulted or this is incest, not, none of that matters. And that extent that they were even thinking about banning birth control. In the meantime, the father of the children aren't having any repercussions. You don't oh, see no. the courts doubling up on making sure that because, you know, some women were saying, OK, well, if you're going to make us have this baby force us, then get these fathers to start paying, paying for prenatal care. Well, of course, or, they're not going to hear. Or that. if they father more than one child and don't take care of it. OK, then how about saying they have to get snipped? There you go. That'll never oh, happen. no, it's a free world. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, exactly. But they can tell a woman what to do. They with can her. tell a woman. They like somebody was talking on the news and, and about all the great women in the world. There's so many, including the queen and how women are so. But yet in America. Exactly. You know, it's like the men don't want women to be. Like I heard rumors Stacey Abrams might not win. I'll double check on that. But uh, if she doesn't win, it's because they just don't like the fact that she's smart. Correct. You saw how bad they mistreated Michelle Obama. Oh, it was horrible. They made they made a comment because she had her shoulder showing, but yet they didn't say anything about uh, Ivana or no Ivan. Um, what was her name? Yeah, her nude photos that you you just Google it and you can see her na butt naked. Correct. But that was okay. That so, was okay. You know, a lot, a lot of people, when Obama came to power, I kept saying, it's just shrouded racism. And people, oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 it was. Yeah. Um, you know, what I do see an end to in this country is the, the control that the white, old, racist men have over everybody. That will change. It's good. Yeah, I'm so sorry it's taken a while, but don't you guys don't worry. I don't know if it'll happen in my lifetime, but it's that the shifting is taking place. Oh, you'll see it in your lifetime. Okay. And, who, and who's that candidate that's so anti abortion, but yet he paid for his girlfriend to have an abortion? Oh, Herschel Walker. Yeah. Is Herschel Walker going to actually win? Excuse me. Is Herschel Walker going to win? It says a big no. He's not going to win. They are starting to walk away from him because it's just too many abortions and too many for other babies that he does nothing for. Right. It's getting really ugly. And I don't think us will win at all. No, I never. We both of us have said that right up, right from the get. He's going to hurt though. He hurt those baby puppies. He killed them, and he won't make comment to it. It's not like it's a vicious rumor. He won't even answer back because he knows he did it. You know, these some of these old men are so worried about, you know, abortion, but yet I say they're pro-birth, not pro-life, because they, you know, look, look at the Satan in Florida, the, the, you don't have to wear a mask, da, 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 how many people he let die, but then he talked about being pro-life. You know, my other point is with this is what when that baby's born, they don't want to put the programs in place to take care of the child. So was it Ron Johnson that actually told someone, oh, well, you know, why are you letting these young girls, babies have these children from rape? Well, we're going to give them a goodie basket with baby stuff. <laughs> right. I mean, come on. Oh, OK. Well, I take back what I said. That makes total sense. Oh, of course. <laughs> right. It's like, hello. A goodie basket. Oh, OK. <laughs> Here's your goodies. Now can raise the kid on your own. I mean. All right. Oh, Miss Brazil, 1955. Hi, Miss Brazil. Love you both. Just got back from Brazil. I saw Lula Bolsonaro. Uh, he is a Trump wannabe. Wait. I don't get this. Oh, no, I'm not following this. I just got back from Brazil. You know what? I don't understand. I don't understand her question. So we'll just skip. Oh, you'll have to rewrite it, babe, and send it in. Yeah. That will be on my show next week. There you go. Virginia Scratcher. When will the housing market stabilize or will it crash soon? I already noticed houses on the market putting prices 5,000 to 10,000 lower around here. 
I don't, well, I see a correction. <laughs> I see a correction. Exactly. It's not going to be like 2008. Uh -uh. If you want to call it a mild crash, but in Sedona, the guy corrected me, the real estate guy and his wife, he goes, no, we call it a correction. I said, okay. It's, it's a I, correction. I stand corrected. But I think by raising the interest rates, they did that to stop the inflation of, of, of houses. Right. And, and so it did bring prices down a little bit because it slowed the market because there's no inventory. There's still no right. inventory. So. And don't forget you guys, the 2008 mark, uh, housing crisis was caused by that bad loan scheme, that Ponzi scheme, where they were letting you in so cheap anybody could buy a house. Correct. Correct. And all of a sudden you owe all this money and nobody could afford it. So people were walking away from houses. It was terrible. It was horrible. But they've put things now so you can't, that, that can't happen again. So we'll never go into the crises like that. They were just giving loans based on nothing. It was like, wow. And people were going crazy. They were buying up. And, and even, it was. Um, uh, uh, sorry, um, but even rentals were cheap because they, they weren't able to hold on to anyone. Everybody was buying a house. And it was bad paper. They were like, the paper was BNC paper, meaning the loans they were giving, I mean, they were really high interest rates and or interest only. And people, you know, they were underwater and they just, you're right. They just walked away. So all, for example, my townhouse in 2008 for Illinois was worth almost around 380, 400,000 back then. A year later, it wasn't even worth 125. Oh my God. I mean, I borrowed on my townhouse to get my office condo. I mean, oh I still have a mortgage God. on it, but luckily I set on my townhouse because it's got equity now, but it was like, whoa. <laughs> it was underwater. Oh yeah. But I, something, you know, it's like something said, don't give it up. And I didn't, I listened to my guides and I just stayed here. <laughs> I know a lot of people that, you know, lived it rent free in the place for a long time and let it gave it back to the bank and it was a real hard time but you know i know that the pulse of america was nurses were gonna we were really begging for nurses to get to school so we could hire them because all the nurses were getting ready to retire right but the 2008 crashed so that means nurses lost their 401ks or the homes they had and or their husbands or partners lost everything. So they kept working. Because one thing you can you can get as a nurse, if you need extra money, you can carry an extra shift. And so um, I was reading in 2008, 2009, with this one girl, I'll never forget, she got her master's in geriatrics, which is a really good up and coming thing to be in as a nurse. She couldn't get a job anywhere nope. with a master's. And now there's a nursing shortage. Yep. Everybody's leaving because the the, the supply chain crisis, the staffing, the it's. <laughs> I talked to a friend of mine who's a nurse the other day, and she she's a school nurse now, but she wants to go back and into like hospitals and stuff. But she said a lot of people are leaving because they can't take the pressure because of the short staffing. And then if somebody dies, they want to hurt the nurses. They want to hold the nurses responsible. Oh, yeah. And also the whole, see, in my day, it was pen to paper. You had charts that you wrote. I remember. And now it's computers and um, uh, the, they're very he top heavy. They have too many uh, executives. Too, that's and right. everybody's treating the, the, the other staff like they're the hired help, you know. Somebody's got to be the worker bees, you know. Yeah. And then you have to document so much. It's like, Arr. yeah. Years ago, when we did paper charting, that was a bear, but now oh. it's even worse. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, it's like, whoa. Okay, Diana, since OPEC, oil producing exporting countries, has slashed our oil supply, will Biden find a way around it and find a new source? Venezuela. The irony is that by putting a stupid move like slashing our oil supply, they are pushing us even faster toward electric vehicles. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, well, Venezuela, you know, years ago when I was in college, my roommates were from Venezuela. That's where I learned Spanish. And it was a democratic country. And I said, they better watch because one of these days you might lose their democracy. And I'm like, oh, no, no. And they said the same thing to me. Well, here we are. 
but I think I don't I, I think that guy in, in uh, Venezuela kind of favors Putin. So, <laughs> um, but the the president of the United States made a deal with Venezuela to oh, get millions oh, of gallons. Of oh, water. I didn't know that. But a lot of the yeah, OPEC, so a lot of the OPEC countries were kind of on Putin's side because because of the oil and stuff like that. But um, you know. Um, well, it's two percent, Mel. Got it. Two to three percent that we're losing from Russia, which is like I've got mineral rights and land right now that they could pump on. That some of them, the land even has pumps, but for some reason, the United States isn't getting oil out of that land. Well, it was two percent from Russia for us, but a lot of percentages from Russia for Europe. Oh, the UK and stuff. Yeah, but. You know, I heard that there was some OPEC countries that did something with the prices because they felt that Putin, a lot of people felt Putin was behind it. And I felt like he was. Oh, <laughs> because yeah, for sure. Control oil prices. It's a way to control elections. Also, it's a way to control um, the fact that he's losing a lot of money in his economy. Correct. Can I say the E word? I just did. <laughs> no, yeah, you're fine. All right. Um, love you both, Linda and Mel. What will the winter be like in Washington, D.C., metro area? Will we get a lot of snow? I think here in Chicago, we're going to have a really bad winter. I feel it in Washington, D.C., too. When yeah. that person just said that, I saw a lot of snow. And I'll tell you where there's going to be another brutal winter. It's going to be Russia and Ukraine. Ooh. And that's going to that's gonna turn the tide against Putin, just the same as what happened when Hitler invaded Russia. The winter got so bad, that's what defeated Hitler, or it helped to defeat Well, him. also, Germany just sent, isn't that interesting, it's Germany, sent um, Ukraine a whole bunch of really good military jackets for the cold. They sent them a whole bunch of what, I'm sorry? Military jackets for the cold. Oh, winter yeah. Winter jackets. Oh, yeah, they're going to be prepared, that's for sure. Ukraine will. I don't know if Russia will be, but Ukraine, the Russian soldiers probably not, but Ukraine, Ukrainians will. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, Patty D'Agostino. That's a nice Irish name, Patty. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'll make you some gravy. We call it gravy. Some people call it tomato sauce. We call it gravy. I'll make you some nice gravy, Patty. <laughs> yeah. Patty and when I think of uh, the UK and Ireland and stuff, I always feel like a nice cup of tea. Yep. And some of those, I order from the Brit, the Brit store. I order their little cookies or tea cookies. They're well, so good. I well, I'm from the South, and when you say tea, there's only one kind. It's iced and sweet. Yes. Oh, my God. When my sister and I went to Mississippi and Louisiana, uh, back where my kinfolk are from, and Missouri, oh, my God, the tea is just as sweet as can be. Tea's but good. delicious, not over. You know what I'm saying? No, it's good. You just keep drinking it. Yeah, and then your blood sugar is screaming for I know. My mom used, my mom, when she was pregnant with me, lived off iced tea. Well, in the South, you know, that's why the South, that's why the South is so slow because traditionally it was so hot and humid. So there was two speeds, slow and stop, and you didn't have air conditioner back in the day. You might have a shade tree around your house. So you had to stay hydrated. So what'd you do? You drank iced tea. Yeah. And move slow because if you move fast, you know, you get the vapors, as they said, you get a, you get heat stroke. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I drink ice green tea now. It's really, you know, you got to. Ice what? Green tea. Oh, green tea is very good for you. That's what they say. I'm actually learning to drink my tea with no sugar. I do have, I like equal, but some people don't like that chemical. So I, my son started it and now I'm trying it. And I also came off a cream for my tea or my coffee. No, I don't now like I that. use. I got to have something. So I use a, a, a fake creamer, but they're actually pretty good. I tried stevia, but it's, it's got a little aftertaste to it. Yeah. But not like, not like the sweetener, you know? Right. Right. Anyway. Okay. Patty D'Agostino wants to know, hello, who will win a New York governor race? I don't know who's running. I don't either. <laughs> but I don't know if she's asking Democrat or Republican. I pick up the Democrats would win. Governor or... race. Let's look at New York. New Hampshire, New York. 
The Republican is Lee Zeldin and, oh, Kathy, Kathy Hochul. She's going to win again. She's going to win. And then uh, Joseph wants to know, hi, Joseph. Uh, he says, hi, Mel and Linda. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for following. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, will Letitia James be reelected as, as New York Attorney General? Absolutely. Totally. But I'll tell you, he'll be out. Was that one that replaced Cyrus Vance? What was his name? Uh, he's, oh, I know who you're talking about. Not the he he kind of he's the one that decided not to. Right. Yeah, he's gone. And, and you know, we'd always said that investigation in New York is not over against Trump. It's not over. Here we are. Okay. Louise, did you see she Letitia? Excuse me. Did you see Letitia James went after DeJoy and won? Yes. I love it. She's amazing. I okay. Hi, Linda and Mel. Love your shows. Will America ever be in peace? Uh, all this divisiveness is wearing me out, and it certainly doesn't help how other countries look at us. We used to be highly admired. Now <laughs> our own people in government, especially 45, puts us down on a regular basis. It's so sad. Well, the West, the rest of the world laughs at 45, unless you're Putin and they just know how to manipulate him. Um, you know. Well, you know, the, the Bible says there will always be war and rumors of war. Uh, unfortunately, now we have the, the 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 science and the weaponry to annihilate ourselves. Yes. Um, I don't see that happening, but I do see peace. Yes, I do. Yeah. And also, um, like you said, that horrible white white racist stuff is going to calm down in this country. It will. It absolutely will. Yeah. You know, the cockroaches all well, right now they don't have anywhere to hide. They can't go back in the in the woodwork because they've gone they're gonna go have to go in the Roach Hotel. And you know what <laughs> the Roach Hotel, they don't come back out. Yeah. <laughs> that's a commercial for raid or what? Yeah, I remember that one. You know, I that remember. Roach Hotel. Does your baby need to go out and he's sitting there? Or is it she? <laughs> I'm your sorry. dog? Does your oh. dog need to go out? No, you know what? She hears the landscapers out there. Look, oh, so she's watching. Watch, she's Where's checking the out the situation. He's yeah. going from the front to the back. Watch her. Look, okay. he here's the man back here. Over here. Look. Here's the man here. Look. There he is. You see the man? See, you can see her. She's Look at those ears up. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. My dogs, too. All gone. He's all gone, Luck. <laughs> it's the landscapers. My, I have landscapers on my too. Okay, okay, Liza. It's okay. It's okay. Liza. Liza means quiet in German. Hey, no. No, it's okay. That's it. She'll stop. Just <laughs> no, I want you to do it because I said she'll stop. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. Um 13 ghost. Ooh. <laughs> This is really good. What? Oh, 13 Ghost says, I'd love to know, is this drama with that orange monkey <laughs> going to be over before 2023? House arrest and duct tape his mouth. Please, my elite can't kill these migraine hits that, that with that, <laughs> that type much longer. <laughs> yes, and let me tell you, there was only 27 people that showed up for the Washington, D.C. rally he had. Yeah. But I think more showed up in Arizona. But he's about ready. When he when they really start hitting him criminally is when I see everybody turning their back. Like, I never saw, I don't know who he is. Yeah, and 26 of them he, were, <laughs> he paid, and the other yeah. was his only friend. <laughs> right. Two of them were paid guards. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely going to uh, and but the thing is, my guides are have been saying this for a while, as you guys know. My problem is I can't give you specifically the time frame, but mm -hmm. I can tell you this too shall pass. Yeah, time is, is hard for us. It really is very hard. Okay, Lynn D wants to know. Hi, Linda and Mel. Hi, Lynn. Could you please read again on the question from Sunday about SCOTUS taking away more of our voting rights and overall rights like marriage, et cetera, since they have a conservative, conservative majority on the court and are consistently judging against anyone not, not white rethug? 
the conservative majority question was misunderstood, I think. Thanks so much. So I she's talking about SCOTUS. Yes. She wants to know uh, something about a question from Sunday, but I, I don't know what she's talking about. But um, she wants to know about SCOTUS taking away more of our voting rights and overall rights like marriage. I don't see them being able to dig in much longer because their days are TikTok. That's what Something's I getting ready to happen. I agree. I see. I see a couple justices off the court. Clarence Thomas being one. Yeah, new justices coming in. So, I see the court. I, I definitely see everybody hustling to get some new people out there. And I see like rules that the courts will really have to that the court will have to follow, and at some point, term limits. So I see term limits. It might not be till another Democrat wins in twenty twenty four. And by the way, today's Indigenous Peoples Day. So. Hey, oh yay! Oh, hey Linda, uh, hey Sue, hi Regina. <laughs> yeah, to hey, my family, to my indigenous family. Hey Hawaii. <laughs> hey, All can I just? I forgot I locked the dogs up when the electrician came. Yep. Can oh, I go unlock the dogs real quick? Let me pause. Okay. We're back. Um, dogs had to come in. <laughs> okay, uh, Lady Day. 58. Greetings, Linda and Mel. Ivanka and Jared Kushner have been keeping a low profile lately. Oh, I'll say. Uh, have you seen an indictment coming for Jared before 45? I see an indictment. I just don't know when. I see an indictment, but I can't tell when. Um, Let's see. Well, will Jared Kushner be indicted before Donald Trump. No. I think they Will might he be indicted after he'll be indicted after. I think don't they, forget, I see Trump throwing Kushner, even his daughter, under the bridge. That's right. I think they might use Kushner to try to get information about Trump that and to squeal or to turn, and they and he probably will. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. I see Trump turning his back on his daughter and Jared. So Okay, this is a good one. Tarot your way. Mel and Linda, will the Georgia Guidestones be rebuilt? I see them rebuilt. It was um, those Georgia Guidestones. I don't know if they know who built them, but they were really cool. And they had and some someone destroyed them, right? Yes, somebody bombed them or ran into them or something. I see them rebuilt. Uh, somebody said like what was written on them was, you know, I read what was on them and it was really neat stuff and it wasn't demonic, but you know, some of the repubes said, Oh, it's, it's, it's demonic. And it really wasn't. It was. It, yes. It says it'd be rebuilt. Correct. I see it being rebuilt. Okay. Uh, here. Hi, Linda and Mel. Susie K. So glad you had a great time. The cat skills. Yeah. It was so cool. <laughs> Excuse me. Caller. Some, I keep getting this spam call. Okay. Um, there's a voting rights bill SCOTUS is taking up this session. It's a bill on Alabama's congressional redistricting plan by the state's GOP state legislature after the 2020 census. More than a quarter of Alabama's population is African American, but minority voters are especially disenfranchised from electing the candidate of their choice. How do you feel SCOTUS will vote? Will they strip away more of the 1965 Voting Rights Act? Well, if they try to, I see the 65 Voting Rights Act being upheld and reinstated at some point. I think they will try. I do too. I think they will try according to my thing. Uh, but it doesn't feel, it's just like with the, the uh, Roe versus Wade. It's temporary. They'll, they'll turn all that over when they take over again. It's like a modern Jim Crow. Yeah. And say it. And that new judge of ours, she was just wonderful. Oh, she's amazing. She talked about the real reason that, you know, this is what 1960, but this all started from way back when when um, our president Lincoln was in, in office. It was done specifically to help disenfranchise slaves. It was who now just becoming having the right to vote. It was. It absolutely was. And uh, but, you know, it's. I mean, for a while, it might look like the Supreme Court rules in Alabama's favor, but ultimately, I see the voting, the voting rights bill being upheld in of 1965, and I also see 
new legislation being passed and upheld that will give everybody free rights to vote. Right. <laughs> Lucky. Lucky. She doesn't like the landscapers. <laughs> I know my dogs are always barking. Um, okay, Laura Stanley. Love you both, Linda and Mel. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I'm so worried about our country. What Will anyone ever be convicted of crimes in the Senate or Congress? It just looks as though they will get away with all the evil they have done. They will have to pay the piper. My guides say yes. And there's investigations going on as we speak. Okay. All right. We got time for just a few more. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, it's Earth Mama. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, she, she sounds familiar. Uh, lucky we can't continue with russia bombing ukraine uh indescribably how can we help to end this horror well one of the ways we can help is by speaking up and say we will not tolerate totalitarian authoritarianism people like putin yes the world is literally squeezing it out it's like you know when you get stuck with something and it goes and then eventually mm -hmm. it pops out lucky lucky the guy's at the door and she says, excuse me, Linda, I'll be right back. Put me on pause. Put it on pause. Lucky. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Go ahead with what you were saying. The dog was barking and it was. Oh, what was, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the question was. Oh, the uh, Russia bombing Ukraine. Um, and how can we help to end the horror? Just vibrationally stay as high as you can. You guys breathe visualize ask for the highest most benevolent outcome but don't sink into it don't get all freaked out try to remain outside of it but it's like a bad something that gets under your skin you know if you get a a wood thing in your finger you know how eventually it pops up the body discards it that's right. what i'm feeling like eventually the body uh, our body of these nations will discard the ugly and I think part of it is us saying we will not support totalitarian authoritarianism, totalitarian authorit authoritarianism jerks like Putin. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Oh, this is a good one. Man Manuel Reyes, or Reyes says, all good things must come to an end, like the Roman Empire. Well, Will the use eventually break into independent regions as a result of internal strife, environmental changes, or disease? How far into the future would this play out? Well, I don't see an end to our country in the near future at all. I don't see an end either. Uh, I think the South is trying to, some Southern states are trying to do their way of legal secession, but I, but I don't see them succeeding. No, and I do see um, that Arizona lady, what's her name? Carrie Lake. Oh, she said when I'm because when they they ended up the FBI ended up going to Mar a Lago. I will tell you right now, the minute I'm governor, we're coming out of the basically she's saying war, you know, we're coming out of the uh, 50 states. Right. Okay. Go for it, honey. <laughs> uh, uh, Emmy J says, hi, Mel and Linda. I love that you do this every week. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, um, let me see. I'm just looking. <laughs> um, okay, this is a good one. Jayashri, I can't say the last name. I'll just say S. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, Mel and Linda. Love you both. Uh, we love you too. Uh, will we ever find out who the January 6th bomber is? Do you see anyone? Well, I do think that they are, or they will have a good idea of who it was. <laughs> they will, but I don't know if they actually will be able to prove. Correct. Who it was. I think they really want to know. And they were, you know, they usually can trace how the bomb was made. Right. They said whoever made that bomb was a professional. Um. I'm sure I, I agree, but um, excuse me, I still think they have a good idea of who was behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
anyway, on a happy note, <laughs> um, on a happy note, how's the weather in California where you're at? It's nice. It's been very foggy and I'm so glad. Remember last year I took my son to Fleet Week? Yes. So I could watch the um, Jets. I love the Blue Angels. And um, this year we didn't do it. This year we said now nah, and it was canceled because the fog was so thick. It's going to be and the guy on the news said if the jet people can't see the top of the Golden Gate Bridge, they don't do it. They don't take any risk. It's going to be 68 here today, so it's going to be nice. OK, it's it's chilly, but but it's like going to be up to 80. Oh, wow. That's good. Which isn't bad. All right, my dear. So it's been a slice. <laughs> uh, and next week I'm doing your show. Next week you'll be on my show. All right. Stay well, everybody. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All righty. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just pause.